This is a configuration that we have seen in the previous term. The voltage gain of this amplifier, who is no other than the non-inverting amplifier, depends exclusively on the values of the two resistors R1 and R2. And then you ask immediately the question, what if those are not resistors? What if what I have is a full-blown impedance Z1 and another Z2? Well, because the voltage gain formula was obtained using exclusively Ohm's law, KVL and KCL, and those still holds in the phasor domain, if we have in impedances Z1 and Z2, still the voltage gain follows is the same as before, depends only on Z1 and Z2. And we are about to take advantage of that um, property in the solution of the problem that follows. The actual exercise we're going to be working on is this one, which is nothing but a glorified non-inverting amplifier with this R1 as Z1 and this parallel as Z2. We have seen already what is the gain from the input VI to the output V0. Let's write out what we expect to get as an output. However, VI, the input voltage here, is just the voltage divider of Vs between these two impedances. Now, all we have to do is replace Vs, which is the phase of representation of the input to voltage Vs, this one, peak value 8, omega 1000 radians per second, zero degrees per phase. And the RMS value is 8 over root 2 because we are using IEEE phasers, right? Which are RMS phasers, zero degrees. The values of the impedances are given for the resistors and the capacitors. Immediately we find the reactance of the capacitors, which are negative 1 over omega C, that is negative 2.5 kilo ohms for C1 and negative 3.3 kilo ohms for C2. So we replace with all of those values in this expression for V0, we know Vs, this one here. We have Jx2, we have R3 and Centria. Let's do the replacement and find what is V0. And we want to write that as a function of time. For that we take the RMS value from the phasor, multiply that times root 2 to get the peak value and we can finally write that the output voltage is a function of time with that peak value, the same omega 1000, and the new phase shift that we just found. Now, the final question, which was actually the first one, is find what is the power delivered by this source. That is a quick question that you could have solved up front at the very, very beginning, because this current here is zero. Zero amps, it is an input current to an ideal op-amp, so that means uh, that uh, the current in the source is just Vs divided by this impedance. So uh, that current conjugate times the value of the voltage source would give you the power delivered active and reactive by this voltage source. And uh, that is the value that we're looking for. And that is the way to solve this exercise. Thank you very much.